Hey, Viking fans, this is Keith Millard, and you are listening to the One Bar and Lupicus Show. Go Vikes! All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lupagus Show. I am One Bar with Lupagus, and today, you know, the Vikings are picking 14, and it is long overdue to take a look over the last five years of the last 14th overall picks to see how they did, just kind of see where uh, where we're sitting here. Yeah, you know, I actually thought we already did this video, and I went back and looked, and we have not yet. Uh, just get a brief history of, you know, the, the 14th pick, how these guys have panned out, and maybe see if we can take anything away from that, what to expect if we do, in fact, stay at 14 and make a choice. So let's jump right back five years ago. What's my time warp? You're doing it too. Cool. So back in 2016, the 14th overall pick was safety Carl Joseph, selected by the Oakland Raiders. Uh, you know, looking back at his career so far, it's, I just say meh. It's kind of a meh. Five uh, interceptions. Uh, he kind of gets tackles in that uh, 70s range. Uh, really not great value for the Raiders with the 14th choice. I mean, you can't call him a complete and utter bust, but he definitely has not lived up to that 14th overall pick status. No, he's absolutely a complete overall bust. At pick 14, you don't want meh. You want uh, good at best. And when you look, I mean, just Google his name. Everything you see says bust next to it. Uh, he signed a one-year $2.5 million contract with the, with the Browns this year. Raiders wanted nothing to do with him. Goodbye. Carl Joseph, not great. I consider him a flat-out bust. And when he was taken at 14, that was a very big surprise. He was like in the late 20s in that year. Yeah, he was. It was early. But, you know, I, I mean, I'm comparing him to another guy who was taken 2016, Laquan Treble, who had like four career receptions for the Vikings. So to me, that's a complete and utter bust. At least they got a little bit of production from the 14th overall pick in Carl Joseph. Well, I mean, Laquan Treadwell was like eight picks later. It's kind of comparing that's apples to nut sacks here. I don't really, I don't get it. Different position, drafted way later. Nobody's arguing. Laquan Treadwell is definitely a bust. I'm just going from a complete production standpoint. Well, That's I'm going to label Carl Joseph a bust, and I'm pulling for him to rip it up in, in Cleveland. Yeah, I mean, he ain't great, but at least they got a little bit from him. Let's go on to 2017, Derek Barnett. This is actually very interesting. This was actually the Vikings' original pick. They traded it to the Eagles to get Sam Bradford that year. Um, so this actually was the 14th pick owned by the Vikings. They took Derek Barnett out of Tennessee. He's at 19 and a half career sacks. 29 tackles for a loss, 101 total tackles. We've been okay. Yeah, it sounds like, I mean, it's not like we're we're watching Derek Barnett every damn snap, but it, it, Barnett's been good. Good. Uh, whether that's worth the 14th overall pick, who knows? I mean, Barnett's another guy that went a little bit earlier, I think, than, than at least I was thinking. Uh, they did pick up his fifth-year option last year, so that's, that's saying a lot. Sign. Um, and while his sack numbers might not be there, I think it's fair to say he's had a pretty, pretty solid career in Philly. If the Vikings would have kept that pick, you know who I wanted them to take at 14 Ooh. overall? Delvin Cook, running back, Florida State. Yeah, I, a Delvin Cook, I'm pretty sure I projected him in the top 10 picks multiple times. I think it was like to the Panthers. Was he the same year as McCaffrey? He might have been. I think I want to say I had Delvin Cook pegged to the Panthers that year, but yeah. Would have loved that. All right. Next up, we have Marcus Davenport. Yeah, another one of your boys, your loves. You love Marcus Davenport more than anything. Yeah, and the Saints gave up tons of shit just to come up and get him. The thing with Marcus Davenport is, is uh, when he's healthy, he's fantastic. When he's healthy, he's uh, produced. He started only 14 games in his career but has 12 sacks. And when he's healthy, he healthy. He's damn near dominant. Yeah, I mean, that's like almost a sack a game. Uh, the problem is he hasn't been healthy, so... It's a big problem. What do, the, what do the Saints have right here? I mean, I don't. you don't really know at this point. Um, complete, absolute, and utter freak as far as his athletic ability and his size goes. Uh, like you said, they gave up the farm to come up and get him. Uh, has he lived up to that trade now? No, he hasn't, but it's been because of injuries, so... If he can string together a couple solid years where he's playing 16, or I should say 17 games now, um, I do think the Saints will get their bang for their buck. And I think Davenport, uh, definitely a player who could uh, break out here in the coming seasons. Yeah, when he's out there, their defense is uh, 
a whole different defense. Next up was the love that I lost. Chris Lindstrom in 2019. Um, the guy I was hoping the Vikings would get. We end up with Garrett Bradbury is what it is. Lindstrom, another guy. There's a very good theme here. 14th pick seems to be players that are taken sooner than expected. So Vikings, you know, maybe it's a Tevin Jenkins type scenario. Maybe we're going to keep the theme here. We'll see. Uh, but Lindstrom, you know, his rookie year wasn't overly fantastic, but he had a very good 2020 year to the point where I, I consider him probably a top 10 guard in the NFL. Holy shit. Do you have his PFF grade handy? Did you research uh, yeah, that? Yeah, it was like 77. Yeah, which well, would be like the Vikings starting two guards combined score from last year. So definitely a huge upgrade. The Vikings would have got him. They ended up with Garrett Bradbury, who, I mean, he's kind of been meh so far. But quit saying meh. 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 Average? What do you want me to say? He's been average. I don't know. I don't I just don't know what that means. All right. So, yeah, I mean, you take a guy at 14, you, you hope he starts more than five games that rookie season. Um, that wasn't the case for Lindstrom, but he did come back and start all 16 last year. So, um, you know, he is what he is. He's mean as hell. He's tough. Um, you know, the Falcons didn't exactly um, do great last year. They are picking four this year, but uh, Chris Lindstrom, definitely a piece on that line that's going to be there for the foreseeable future for the Atlanta Falcons. Falcons and last year, the San Francisco 49ers take Javon Kinlaw, a guy that actually is probably should was projected to go before that. So uh, Kinlaw started 12 games, one and a half sacks. It's tough to really just flat out grade this dude. I mean, for 12 games started, I guess I would have expected a little more sack production, but um, the numbers don't look great, but I, I think he's going to be pretty damn good. Yeah, you know, it always seems like defensive tackles take a little bit of time to to get acclimated to the NFL, the speed of the game, the blocking that they have to go against. So not surprising he didn't have a huge impact. I do think, didn't he have a touchdown? I feel like he scored a touchdown last year. Um, but this guy's kind of a freak. Uh, he was kind of put into a situation. They got rid of DeForest Buckner. He's thrust into the starting lineup right away. Uh -huh. Thank you for that. I felt that. Um Welcome, both emotionally and physically. So, um, yeah, I, I, I feel like Kinlaw's got a bright future. So let's not, uh, you know, nothing to worry about for the 49ers when it comes to Javon Kinlaw. Uh, so 14th overall pick. Let's talk yeah. a little Vikings here. Uh, if you can tell me the last player the Vikings took at pick 14, I will do the Fruit Bowl right now. Five, four. Second pick 14. Three, two. Kirk Loudermilk. Oh, oh, give me a break. Kirk Loudermilk? I, no. Uh, it was DJ Dozier, 1987. Mm. Big old fat bust, but I do have his rookie card, and I'll show it to you sometime if you want wow. to see it. I'm very proud of you. Didn't he play for the Mets for a while? He did play for the Mets for a while. Not eh, he, not great. But uh, DJ that? Dozier was our last 14th overall pick. But, you know, looking at these overall guys, the last five, not bad. <sighs> not bad. Yeah, I mean, it's it. No one really knocks your socks off looking at these guys, but there's some good solid players here. Not, I don't, I mean, there's not a total complete bust like a guy who just didn't do anything. So I think that's a little bit of a positive sign. If we do stick at 14, chances based off history that we're at least gonna get somebody who's gonna produce and, and stick around and be in the starting lineup for a couple of years. All right, there you have it. Remember, subscribe, like the video. We're trying to get to 3,000, baby. 3K, man, what a day that will be. What will you do? I mean, should we just take a beer shower? What are we going to do? I don't know. We'll surprise We'll surprise you guys. Maybe you can, uh, what do they call it? You take a shot between my tits. I think that's called gross. <laughs>